There are so many things I dread. Losing my car keys, getting a cold, forgetting my smartphone at home. Oh yeah, and getting a really long prison sentence. No, no, we don't want that. But hey, you do the crime, you do the time, right? Here's a list of the 10 most outrageous and longest prison sentences ever. Bernard McGinn, 490 years. I'm not happy about how this one went down, and you'll know why in a while. Bernard McGinn started off as a volunteer in the Provisional Irish Republican Army. In 1978, he killed a man, but he didn't stop there. In 1979, he was charged for the possession of explosives and was sentenced to 10 years. But would you believe that this guy didn't even show up for his trial? I guess he decided that he was not about that prison life. He was on the run for a while and was finally arrested after a siege which lasted about 27 hours. During that time, he was holding a family hostage. He was finally detained, but in 1987, somebody thought it was a good idea to release him. Big mistake. He joined the IRA's South Armagh Brigade and was eventually trusted to help assemble bombs. Again, I ask, how and why? Later, he was part of a sniper team which killed nine members of the security forces between 1992 and 1997. The sniper team was arrested in 1997 and McGinn was honest about all he'd done. In 1999, he was sentenced to 490 years. But guess what? He didn't even serve two years. The term of the Good Friday Agreement allowed him to visit his sick mother, and the next year, he was freed. The number of times this man has escaped jail would make even El Chapo envious. If you've seen my video on El Chapo's prison escapes, you'll know why. Bernard wasn't the luckiest man on earth, though. In 2013, he was found dead of a suspected heart attack. Number 9. Abdul Qadir Masharipov. 1,368 years. Is 1,368 years too harsh or too lenient? I think they went easy on him, but I'll let you be the judge. Picture this. It's New Year's Eve and you're happily dancing the night away. Then suddenly, instead of fireworks, you hear gunshots. Where do you run? What do you do? I know I'd be completely horrified. This is what happened at the Reyna nightclub in Istanbul, Turkey. And the man responsible for it all was a citizen of Uzbekistan named Abdul Qadir Masharipov. He pulled up to the club in a taxi, then took an automatic rifle from the car and almost instantly opened fire. He entered the club and continued shooting. When he ran out of bullets, he threw some stun grenades and this gave him a chance to reload. I was shocked to read that he even shot at injured people who were already on the floor. During the attack, 79 people were injured and 39 people were killed. It took about 17 days to find him, but when he was finally caught, he was detained. In 2020, he was sentenced by the Turkish court to 1,368 years in prison. The Islamic State group claimed that it was responsible for the attack, and Masharipov is currently serving his sentence. Number 8. Inez del Rio, 3,828 years. Inez del Rio Prada was arrested in Zaragoza, Spain in 1987. And if you haven't heard of her before, the reason for her arrest will surprise you. She was accused of playing a role in 23 assassinations and a car bombing. However, her motive was a bit different from the bad guys I mentioned earlier. Inez was part of a group called the ETA in Basque. Their main purpose was to advocate for independence for their country, and they did so in some of the most violent ways. The ETA is considered a terrorist group by several countries, and has been blamed for the murders of at least 825 people during a period of violence which included bombings and shootings. Inez had many supporters who did not agree with her 3,828 year sentence. And when she was released in 2013, she was greeted by family members who were proudly waving the Basque flag. Of course, this decision did not sit well with everyone, including Marimar Blanco, who led the Victims of Terrorism Foundation at the time. She remarked, It is hard to digest that these people, who have violated human rights more than anybody in this country, are now being supported by the European Court of Human Rights. Charles Scott Robinson 30,000 years. I don't think that there's a prison sentence long enough for people who endanger and hurt children. The jury who sat on this case seemed to agree with me on this one. In 1994, Charles Scott Robinson was charged with six counts of rape. All of his victims were children, one as young as three years old. Robinson was given 5,000 years for each count of rape, and this added up to a total of 30,000 years. This wasn't even the first time he'd been in trouble with the law, though. Before his conviction, he'd committed theft and burglary. Perhaps if he'd been arrested immediately, he might not have had time to do all of the other awful things he did. Hopefully, this conviction sends a strong message to anyone else who intends to hurt a child. According to one member of the jury, by God, we can send a message to the offender that we are not going to tolerate it. We don't want him to have a chance of ever getting out again. 
30,000 years is considered to be one of the longest jail terms in American history. Terry Nichols, 161 life sentences, plus 9,300 years without parole. The Oklahoma City bombing occurred in April 1995. 168 people were killed, while over 680 civilians were harmed. The Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building was almost totally destroyed, while hundreds of other buildings in the vicinity were also damaged. In addition to that, at least 86 cars were destroyed. One of the men responsible for this act of domestic terrorism was Terry Nichols, a seemingly simple man who was raised on a farm and liked to spend his time caring for injured birds and animals. I've always suspected the quiet ones, and I guess I'm right. As Nichols got older, he began to develop anti-government views and experimented with explosives. One thing led to another, and now he is serving 161 consecutive life sentences and 9,300 years without parole. Moses Sitole. Remember what I said about the quiet ones? Well, South African Moses Sitole, also known as the ABC Killer, appeared to be quite calm and well-mannered to those around him. He even led an organization called Youth Against Human Abuse, and the main objective of this group was to get rid of child abuse. Ironically, this innocent-looking guy became South Africa's most prolific serial killer. His main targets were women between 19 and 45, and they were often interviewees for positions within his charitable organization. He would take them to a remote location, then rape and eventually kill them. His youngest victim was the son of one of these women. He was left to die with a terrible head wound after his mother was killed. After committing 38 murders, he contacted a journalist and revealed himself to be the wanted serial killer. He even provided directions to the body of one of his victims. Sitole was arrested, and on December 5th, 1997, he received 50 years for each murder. 12 for each of 40 rapes, and 5 years for each of 6 robberies he had been responsible for. This adds up to 2,410 years, because his sentences run consecutively. He is now serving his time in Manguang Correctional Center in Bloemfontein. Dudley Wayne Kaiser, two life terms plus 10,000 years. The place was Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The time, Halloween 1976. The crime, a triple murder. The victims were his wife, his mother-in-law, and a college student. A neighbor recalled that after hearing what she believed to be firecrackers, she saw Emily lying in another neighbor's driveway with a wounded chest. Her son was running away after witnessing his mother's shooting, but it got worse. When the police arrived at the scene, they found Emily's mother and Richard Pyron dead. They had both been shot in the head. I couldn't find much information out there about his motive for the killings, but I did find out something interesting. At the time, the death penalty was not an option, so the jury decided to sentence him very harshly as a warning to other potential killers. In 1977, he was sentenced to death by electric chair, but the conviction was overturned. When he was retried in 1981, he received two life sentences plus 10,000 years. In 2016, he was denied parole by the Alabama Board of Pardons and Paroles. Number 3. Alan Wayne McLaurin, 20,750 years. In 1996, Alan Wayne McLaurin was sentenced to 12 years in prison for his participation in several horrendous crimes, such as kidnapping, rape, and robbery. His partner in crime, Darren Anderson, was sentenced to 1,993 years around the same time. Together, the men had committed some of the worst acts imaginable, the most notable one being this. One night, they spotted an elderly woman in a gas station in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They followed her after she left, then rammed her car off the highway. After that, the two men raped her repeatedly for several hours. I know, I couldn't believe it either. Somehow, Anderson felt like he had been given an unfair sentence, so he requested a reconsideration. After one of their cases was reviewed, the judge ended up sentencing Darren to 11,000 years, while McLaurin was sentenced to 20,750. I think they finally got what they deserved. Number 2. Othman El Nyawi, Jamal Zugam, Emilio Suarez Trashoras. 42,924, 42,922, 34,715. These three men were given sentences of 42,924, 42,922, and 34,715 years for their roles in the 2004 Madrid train bombings. These coordinated bombings occurred on the 11th of March 2004 and resulted in the deaths of 193 people. In addition to these fatalities, over 2,000 people were injured. Al-Qaeda took responsibility for this gruesome act, but no evidence has been found of their involvement. Evidence has been found against El Nuay, Zugam, and Trashoras, though. El Nuay, 
is believed to be responsible for transporting the explosives and for planting one of the bombs. Zugam was seen leaving a rucksack on one of the bomb trains, and it is also suspected that he sold the telephones which were used in order to detonate the bombs. Trashoras received the lightest sentence, 34,715 years. He provided the killers with dynamite in exchange for drugs. I find it interesting that, under Spanish law, the maximum sentence any of them will be able to serve is 40 years. It is likely that all three men will be released in 2044. I don't know if that's a good idea. Number 1. Chamoy Tipiaso. 141,078 years. Our record breaker is a woman named Chamoy Tipiaso from Thailand. Her crimes were not deadly and horrific like some of the people I just told you about. So what exactly did she do to land herself over a hundred thousand years in prison? And what could be worse than robbery, murder, and rape? Well, apparently, my friend, it's corporate fraud. Tipiaso scammed more than 16,000 people in a pyramid scheme, earning $204 million for herself in the process. She started a chit fund which seemed like an oil share which would provide high returns. She had connections in that industry, and this made her claims believable to others. Even high-ranking, politically powerful investors believed that she was legitimate. When her dishonest scheme was discovered, many sought revenge and compensation. In 1989, she was given the world's longest prison sentence. You're probably thinking that she's still in a cell somewhere contemplating her bad decisions, right? Well, Dipyaso only served eight years of her sentence and is already free. In Thailand, fraudsters are only required to spend 20 years in prison. If you like this video, click one on your screen and I'll meet you there for more great content. See you there.